Hello everyone, hope you are well on this Saturday morning. I walked out there on the back patio a while ago with the dogs and it's like 65 degrees out there and it felt glorious. And I know it's going to get hot later on, but it was kind of nice to feel that cool. I mean, it, I just took a deep breath and just took a few minutes and enjoyed it. So hope it is good where you are. I'm going to be talking about what is coming and how a lot of people, well, I believe that a lot of people just don't realize what's coming or they don't realize the, the gravity of it, the weight of what is coming, but go more into that. Also, do you feel like at times or most of the time you feel like Noah, like from the Bible, or from Genesis, do you feel like uh, you're, you know, like Noah did at, in certain ways, of course. I'm going to go more into that in my scripture sharing here later on. So do stay tuned for that. Uh, so uh, first, though, if you like this video, hit the like button. It helps us out. We do appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, do consider subscribing because, again, that that helps us out. I don't do uh, commercials. I don't do a lot. I don't do any, you know, uh, uh, affiliations and things like that. Uh, I've decided at least for now that I'm not going to do that. So just watching, hitting like, hitting the subscribe, you know, subscribe, that, that just helps us out. So we do appreciate it greatly. I was reading or I nah, saw another video uh, during the day yesterday, or might have been last night, I can't remember, about the uh, the the fires in Maui and, and when that happened, uh, it's been like, Oh, it almost two weeks ago. Hard to believe that. But a lot of the survivors are describing that as, as like a horizontal. They're describing it like a blowtorch uh, coming down that hill horizontally. Now, I know the winds were really uh, a big factor, but I, I thought it interesting that they described it like a blowtorch. I mean, that is just frightening. And then I don't think I mentioned this before, but you may have seen it on reports that even out in the water, out in the water, but not like right next to the shore, but out in the water, ships or boats were, were destroyed. They, they burned. And I guess that's also part of the wind, but it just makes you it just, it, you know, just makes you makes you wonder. I mean, what a what a tragedy. And there's still over a thousand people missing. It's just awful. There's a lot about that that seems very odd and off now. It's just a lot off on that. Now, I, 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 uh, I, I saw also last night where the Big Island, there's there, there are fires in other areas in Hawaii, like like uh, the Big Island, and I forgot the exact area, but uh, there was some short video I saw of it in the distance, and it looked like, and it wasn't just like a little brush fire; it was a big time fire. If you live out there, let us know, you know, in the comments too, what's going on, other fires. Seems like there's a lot of fires going on uh, in the world, literally and figuratively. And I'm, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that at least here, talking about the United States and North America, include Canada and that, that you can't tell me that it's not part of a land grab. Uh, I, I'm, I'm convinced. I really am. Now, that, that might be hard to, to prove uh, without a doubt right at the moment, but usually these things are proven in time, and it'll be interesting to just watch it unfold. But I, I'm convinced the land is part of it. I really am. I, I just think that. I had a, uh, a viewer uh, email me and tell them they live in Montana, their family and their family, and they and they're concerned because they have fires. And this is in Montana, and I don't know the exact location there, of course, but uh, they said that there are fires in Glacier Park, around Glacier Park. They said that there's fires to their north in Canada, there's fires to their south, and there's fires to their west, within 20 miles of where they live, and they're very very concerned. Now they have a a plan to to uh, escape, um, and and they and they've lived there, and they know fires can be an, an issue there, but not from dang every direction, you know. I, I mean, so what in the world? What in the world? 
is going on. And I think we have a good idea. Let us know in your area, if you if you live in these areas or, or, or wherever you are, if it's an area we don't talk about, you know, and, you, and you're seeing this, let us know. We've had a good bit of rain here off and on now. This week has been a little dry, but overall, we've had a lot of rain here. So I don't think we're in danger of that, at least not right now, as far as as far as fire. I saw a story, this has been a couple of few days ago, and I just haven't had time to, to do a video on it, but I believe, and this is definitely also in the category of, do you realize what is coming? And to a degree, it's already here. There was a story about a Minnesota state lawmaker with a huge warning about police departments just basically evaporating. Now, this example was a small town in southeast Minnesota, Good Goodhue, and I'm probably mis, mispronouncing that, but G O O D H U E, where there recently their entire police force just resigned. Now it's a small town, so it's probably a small police force, but still, just non-existent. They're gone now. There were several reasons given for this, uh, but this was a, this state lawmaker is putting out a warning. Like this serves as a warning to to not just the state of Minnesota, but the country. And, and I believe it's a big trend. It's not talked about very much. And it's, you know, as a citizen, that's, that's huge. That's a problem. And it's a reflection, like she said, of a bigger problem. Uh, part of it is, and, and a lot of it really is, well, there's several, several factors, but fueled by the push to defund the police back in 2020 started it. Uh, you know, and she acknowledged there's some bad police in every department. You know, just with any profession, there are going to be some bad apples. You just have to do your best in training and uh, screening when you hire. You can't avoid it totally. But the overwhelming majority are good and there for the real reason, the, the good reasons to do their job and serve the public. But it's the same with every other profession. You'll find that the case, you know, um, very difficult job. It's relatively low pay, especially for the risk that they put themselves in and their families. And she said, this is the supply and demand problem. We just have no applicants ready to refill these positions. A lot of the problem they pointed to was low morale, low morale. And, and, and that's not just in that area. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing and many major metropolitan police departments have massive shortages and that's alarming. You know, you don't see it on the news. You don't see that written in the newspapers or wherever or talked about on the TV, cable, wherever, you know, you get any kind of news. It's, it's just not talked about much. Um, you know, it, and, and until they get the proper support and, and, and that's not, it's just going to continue to get worse. And I think this, you have, what well, the real danger is you have a, a decline or a, a police departments evaporating. At the same time, the crime is just escalating big time. And I think that's part of it, too. And they, they pointed this out, is that there's so much increase in crime that at some point, a police officer is going to, even though if they love their job, they're going to be like, well, OK, this is this is the risk I'm taking every day and the pay I'm getting. And over here, I got a way that this, the crime is increasing. Even when we, when we do our job and we put them away, they're released early or there's no bail, no cash bail, whatever. And, you know, there's just low consequences or no consequences. And the criminals are not getting punished. There's, there's just, there's just not enough uh, punishment to fit the crimes or any of the crimes. And, it's like the good people, the law abidings or people are getting punished or blamed and the criminals are being awarded or, or just, you know, let go or, uh, you know, time after time, they just let go. There's so many stories of people committing these horrible crimes that had a rap sheet miles long, you know, shouldn't have been on the streets, but that's a big part is there's no consequences. And, and so they get frustrated. And they got to go. There are a lot of early retirements. They're, they're leaving for other departments or different areas that are safer. So, uh, you know, and, and I, I can't really, I mean, I can understand that too from their point of view. I really can. Um, 
I've, I've heard of individual cases and I've watched some videos of, of, of folks who are, who are in law enforcement and they made that decision just to go to a different profession totally, just to go to a different line of work because, and they say, Hey, I love my job, but I have a young family, I have kids and it's not, it's gotten to where it's not worth the risk. And that is, when you hear that, I mean, that should set alarm bells like all over the place, right? I mean, so what happens? You know, so the crime is going up. Law enforcement personnel is declining. That's not a good trend. Not at all. What fills that gap, if anything? And, and I think that's a recipe for disaster because the ones who do fill the gap for the you know, increasingly not good. Uh, maybe the worst kind of people may be filling that gap. And and if you have no police, something else is going to fill the void. It always does. That's just what happens. And so what fills the void is something more, much more terrible. Then you have, uh, I don't even know the word. I, I mean, then you have chaos. You have lawlessness even more. And then it becomes a situation to where whatever uh, person with the most uh, with the most power takes control. I mean, that's what happens historically, and it will happen here. I think it's a trend that will continue, and it's not being talked about, of course. But I think we have a situation where increasingly law enforcement is frustrated, and uh, I've read article after article where sheriffs, police chiefs. Hey, we're doing the best to do our jobs. We put these people away and they're back on the dang street. So it's what point do they just throw up their hands and say, I'm out. I'm out. I got to protect my family. I got to protect our folks, you know, my folks. And what do you have at that point? You have a super bad situation, a very scary situation. And so I think this is something that a lot of people just don't see it. They don't see it coming. And it's actually happening. So a lot of people just walking around, not even looking physically where they're going, but don't even know what's going, what's coming either. That's just my thoughts. What do y'all think about that? Share your thoughts on that. But, uh, you know, what do you do? What do you do about it individually? You know, I think, like I've said before, is you try to be a hard target physically and you're being out and, you know, with your home, community, neighbors, you got to band together. You got to have some type of system, even if it's just informal, to warn each other. A lot of neighborhoods have that. And I think that's where it starts is right there where you are, right where you live. You know, if it's not going to happen where you are, if you have the means, try to look for another place to get to relocate. I know nowadays that is super difficult and it just depends. Everybody's situation is different. I'm going to share a uh, passage from Genesis, from the first book. You're going to be like, dog, what are you doing? I talked about Noah, and we reference Noah as preppers a lot, don't we? And uh, But this is just a little bit of a different spin on it. Um, We're taking part in a Bible study, and and we've started off. And it's and it's it's interesting. We're, we're going to study or we're studying the book of Mark, the New Testament. But we started out in Genesis. And and so I, th- I think it's a, a good idea to, to go and anything that ties the Old Testament and the New Testament is awesome. You know, but we're, we started we it was just the example of Noah. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to read a little bit from Noah. I mean, from much from Genesis uh, chapter six. Starting at verse nine for a few few verses says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all the people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth, like a reset. And then down in chapter 7, 
First uh, verse says, The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. And in both of those passages that I read, Noah is righteous. God found favor in, in Noah because he walked with God when in a, during a time when very little people are doing that. Kind of sound familiar? And I think the, the big takeaway... I know in our Bible study is that, you know, it said that Noah was righteous and walked with God. It didn't say he was perfect. It didn't say that uh, uh, he was anything like Jesus, you know, uh, but but he strived to do that. He was not he, he was he has flaws and, and is sinful, just like all of us, you know, after the uh, after the flood and all that. I mean, the story about him getting hammered, you know, going out and drinking way too much wine. And so he's human. However, God found favor in him. So I think that's important to realize and just point out and, and remind ourselves that, you know, we are not perfect. We know, you know, we are, we all fall short of the glory and uh, of God. And, uh, and I think a lot of times we, we, we get caught up in thinking that we have to be this, a uh, superstar Christian and and have the Bible and throw it at people's faces and all that. Yeah, I got to do that. It didn't, it didn't take much. Sometimes it's just being kind, saying an encouraging word and, and having some grace. And, uh, and, and that's really all it takes. Sometimes you can make somebody's day just doing something like that, smiling and, and saying a kind word to a retail worker or a server or something like that, you know, and having some patience. It, it just works wonders. It really does. Just think about when it's done to you. How that makes you feel. So I think if we can be in this world that's gone cocoa puff nutso, you know, if we can anything small thing we can do to to uh, to be the shining, to be the the example um, of His image, I think that's huge, and that's where it starts with us individually. It's not like we got to go out and change the world and go to go to Zimbabwe and, and do all this stuff and, and, and get all the traffickers and all, you know, we don't have to, if you're called to do that, go for it. But, uh, we, we can start right here where we are just right, right. in our daily walk, you know, and stay close to God. And, uh, and let's strive to be like Jesus, the ultimate advocate for us. Share your thoughts. Hope this was helpful. Let's be safe out there. God bless you. I'll see you soon.